Hey everybody, welcome to NTOP Live, and today we're going to show you how to integrate NTOP Platform with SolidWorks. My name is Matt Rohr, and I am the manager of product support for Entopology, and also a certified SolidWorks expert. Uh, we think this is an important topic because many Entopology customers also use SolidWorks and would like to transfer data between tools. Uh, so my expertise and my experience is with SolidWorks, but many of the techniques I'm about to show you also apply to PTC Creo or Siemens NX or Onshape or any feature-based solid modeling software. I'll be showing you how to import a part into NTOP, how to export a part from NTOP, and how some thoughtful application of CAD features can make the entire workflow more efficient. Uh, so we're going to move pretty quickly, and there may be questions. And if you get lost, the best way to get answers is to visit the Entopology Help Center, where you can search the knowledge base. Uh, my colleague Kaylee has created a tutorial on this topic. And if you're still stuck, uh, submit a request. So let's get started. So in this example, we'll be looking at a robotic arm design and focusing on the linkage here highlighted in blue. Uh, we want to perform a topology optimization study with NTOP platform, but also retain the red faces. Uh, which are mating features in the assembly. So first we're going to look at how to import parts in the end topology. Uh, we're simply going to add the import part block and select the file. And notice how we support uh, several CAD formats, including native SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, and CREO, as well as STEP or Parasolid. Uh, and if we don't offer native support for your CAD system, uh, my suggestion is to always use Parasolid uh, for the most reliable data transfer. Uh, in my case, I will import the native SOLIDWORKS file. So we could get right to work, but instead I, I'm going to back up one step and I'm going to show you how a few thoughtful applications of CAD features uh, can make this workflow a little bit more efficient. So in SOLIDWORKS, I created a configuration called Design Space, which will be used for the topology optimization study. Uh, in my design space configuration, I suppressed the fillets on the inside edges of these two pockets and also added one millimeters of material uh, to the surfaces I want to retain. And the reason uh, for that is that I know that, these, that the, topolo the topology optimization process will eliminate some material and disturb the faces that I am referencing in the downstream CAD operations. Uh, so by adding material, we're making an allowance for some post-processing. And for demonstration purposes, this time I'm going to export a Parasolid file and I'll update the link in NTOP platform. Uh, so we can see that we are maintaining associativity between NTOP and SOLIDWORKS, even with that added step of creating a Parasolid. So uh, this presentation is going to focus completely on the integration between NTOP and SOLIDWORKS. And uh, even though we are going to perform a topology optimization study, uh, I, so if you want to know more about topology optimization, again, uh, go to the Help Center, uh, and there's a lot of excellent content. Uh, here is a walkthrough from my colleague, Annika. So in the topology optimization does take a little bit of time to set up and to run, but here are the results. Uh, and, and you can see NTOP easily converts those results into a smooth, implicit body. But notice I'm also losing the definition of the, sh the sharp edges around the bolt hole pattern. And then we'll con convert from an implicit to a mesh, and then convert the mesh to a CAD object. And those holes, uh, because I made them smaller, they have completely disappeared. But in this example, uh, this is perfectly acceptable. Uh, in manufacturing terms, if you think about the output of the topology optimization as the output from your 3D printer, uh, and then uh, the, we're going to require some post-processing of the critical faces, so we'll perform the, the uh, machining step in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, so we're going to export the Parasolid from NTOP, and now we are back in SOLIDWORKS, and we're going to open that Parasolid file. Uh, the SOLIDWORKS import diagnostics does find one faulty face here, which we can repair, and then we're going to save that file. Uh, and then we will import 
that part into the original SOLIDWORKS part in the default configuration again. Uh, so you can see that we have some we have multiple solid bodies and I'll use the SOLIDWORKS intersect feature to combine these two objects and then the delete face tool to clean up some artifacts to create the final piece. Uh, notice the faces in red are the same faces that we used in the beginning of the exercise. So if you look at the assembly, uh, the all the in change to the optimized configuration, my assembly mates are recognized and there are no rebuild errors. Uh, so this part is fully is fully functional with SolidWorks. Uh, I can even perform additional modeling operations. I can create renderings. I can create drawings, uh, or I can even create this motion capture. Okay, so the last topic I want to discuss are some limitations of this process. Uh, we occasionally re do receive support requests from customers who would like to export a more complex periodic structure. Uh, we should keep in mind that CAD systems tend to reach the upper limit of their performance at about 10,000 faces in a model. Uh, so here we have a 10 millimeter cube that is just filled with a single gyroid cell, and that translates to 812 faces. And the implicit technology that NTOP uses can very easily generate this structure in a 100 millimeter cube, or we can decrease, de decrease the cell size or create any number of complex design changes that could very quickly generate hundreds of thousands or even millions of bases. Uh, and we, were, we will definitely exceed the processing power of most CAD software. So if you're looking for ways to display a periodic structure outside of NTOP, uh, look for a different path or contact the NTOP support team for suggestions. So to recap, here's the entire workflow in one slide. Uh, starting with step one, we import that object into NTOP, perform the topology optimization, convert to a CAD part, export to SOLIDWORKS, and then combine the output with the original design to create the final piece which can be used in downstream drawings and assemblies. And that's all there is to it. Uh, once again, uh, my name is Matt Rohr. I am the support manager at Entopology. Thank you very much for watching.